Hi folks, welcome back to the shed, which today is doing double duty as a pattern shop, because I need to make a sump, or an oil pan if you prefer, for reasons that will become clear if you watch this video up here. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can mould something like this for casting. Uh, it looks like this has been done in multiple sections of what appears to be coarse sand given the uh, surface finish, but I'm going to attempt a match plate approach, which is where you essentially have two separate moulds, one for doing the outside and one for doing the inside of the part. Now these are often made from a single huge block of aluminium, thicker than the part, that most of which is machined away on both sides to produce a single mould, or a single pattern, that is then used one side and then the other, removed and then the, the two halves of the mould are put together. But firstly, if you're going to do it like that, there's an awful lot of machining, you've got to remove all of that metal. And secondly, you've got to use a material that's strong enough to handle the, the forces of being moulded up with such a thin section, because you've essentially made a hollow part. But there's another way you can do match plates, which is where you make two completely separate things, one with a negative section and one with a positive section, and you have them both essentially made solid, um, and that way they can be made out of much weaker materials. It's easier to form more machine. Now, if only I had a machine that made weak but dimensionally stable parts. Right, let's see what we can do here. Uh, brioche, no, jam, ah, perfect. Well, that was a lot quicker than I was expecting. Normally you'd think you'd have to run the machine for about 90 hours to produce all this stuff. Anyway, I obviously don't have a machine big enough to fit something like that in all in one go. So I've split it up into pieces and I've got a little bit of post-processing to clean up the edges to, before I glue these together. And once they're all glued together, I'm gonna to screw them to boards. So let's crack on with that. So for the inside mould, I'm going to have these so that the, uh, the surface mounts up flush with the other side of this board, that's the side that gets the sand on it. Um, and these are going to screw in place to here. And I'm going to use this as a jig to hold it all together while the glue dries. Of course, you can print in countersunk screw holes no problem at all. So it looks like it all lines up nicely. I'll put some glue on and we'll leave it at that. There we go, all glued up. A few little tweaks here and there with the uh, clamps and uh, plain leaning against it, but uh, more or less went together pretty straight. So pretty happy with that. All right, that's the glue on those bits dry. So now I've just got to glue the two halves together on this bit. Got a Canadian one in the batch. I must have been trying too hard to channel Matthias Wonderle. Eh? So for the outside pattern, I've got my um, printout here, which is showing the, uh, the rough outline. You can't really trust laser printing for dimensional accuracy, at least not in the long direction, but it's a good starting point. And these have all got screw holes printed in them. So uh, I'm gonna get this uh, screwed down on some, with a little bit of slop in the holes, and then I can glue it all up clamp it together and make sure it's all square. Right, 
Right, we're plus one day. Um, these have glued together quite nicely. That's all worked just fine. Um, so I'm going to glue the two halves together um, with this piece that goes there. Um, but I'm going to do that before I glue the base in because um, it's going to be a nightmare to clamp these edges up otherwise. Uh, and also I've, I've missed a ledge off this piece that would align the, uh, the front of the base, uh, which is present on the rest of these here. It carries these at the right height. Um, so I'm gonna got to glue a piece onto onto this anyway. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get this is uh, enough glue faces to do in one go, and get that glued up and um, carry on from there. Well, I fastened this bit of galv flat strap across it, tightened it up, and that's pulled it up flush. So that's good enough for me. So yeah, I'll let that dry up and then the next thing will be to uh, glue the base piece in. Right, <clears throat> final gluing operation on this bit, I hope anyway. I need to put the uh, base pieces in, these are just sat in there in the minute. I can't figure out any way to, to clamp it properly with everything on top. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the glue on and then simply place it that way up and weigh that down. Uh, the uh, these pieces have got some ribs on that, that stick out below the bottom of any of this part, so that'll hold it against here. And then I can weight this joint. There's a join in the middle. Um, so I can weight that and hold it down against this board, which is flat enough. Uh, and then I'd glue up like that. Meanwhile, the glue on the inside pattern's dry, so uh, I'm going to do some some surface finish to uh, sort out on here. The, the, sort of the, the horizontal sections are not so critical. The sand will come off them kind of almost regardless of what they look like. But the vertical faces have got to be pretty smooth um, so that when you pull the, uh, pull the mould off the pattern, it doesn't drag it to pieces. So uh, obviously printing has left lots of horizontal lines um, so we're going to get rid of that, and there's also a bit of just nasty, nasty printing defects that you get when the head moves across the perimeter. Um, so I'm going to sand it, but um, PLA is kind of funny stuff for sand. It clogs the paper because it, it kind of it softens at such a low temperature that just simply rubbing on it softens it enough that it doesn't make dust anymore. Uh, so I'm going to try to do the bulk by scraping it with my marking knife. That's the first pass of sanding done, and it's largely lost its washboard finish. I've noticed a couple of CAD glitches uh, that have left me some uh, sharper corners here than I'd, uh, than I'd like, because you, you never really get good results on a sharp corner. But um, I'll get some little bit of filler in there, and there's a, there's a radius here that I've forgotten to put on, because it's a very square corner in there. But uh, yeah, get a little bit of filler in those, get that sanded, and then I'll probably put a, uh, at least a, a guide coat of of primer on it and uh, then flat that back. That's those bits filled, so uh, yeah, just let that set up. Rather than print this thing all that much thicker to make, to make the base, which was flat, I figured I'd stop it there and screw it down to some boards, just leave an open hole for the bottom. Uh, and I printed in these M10 threads that I'm going to use to screw these boards on. Well, that's the last of the glue up done, but there's another step before I can screw this down and do final prep. In order to cut the printout time from completely absurd to merely ludicrous, I've printed it out with only a, a few percent infill and with quite thin shells, and I've also missed out these huge chunks from the inside of it rather than filling it up right from the base. But although it's, it's pretty strong, you know, it's, it's quite stiff, 
apart from this piece, which is pretty thin. Um, in order to give myself the best chance of, uh, of not smashing it to pieces when I mould it up, I'm going to backfill with plaster of Paris. And that makes it super dense. You could whale on that all day long. Um, it's pretty cheap. Mix it up. Um, I'm going to pour it in sections and stages because if you pour a big chunk of this, it gets quite hot and I think that'll soften the, uh, <coughs> soften the PLA. Uh, so uh, I'll mix it up, do it sort of in layers and go from there. Right, that's done. It's not completely perfect. There's a you know, couple of spots where it hasn't filled, but this is all now properly supported. You can weigh along that when you're pounding sand around it. It's a lot heavier. Um, I put some wood in here to support it against the board rather than filling it out to the top with plaster of Paris because it seemed rather wasteful. The ended pattern filled a little bit less well because it's got all these M10 stud holes in it that stopped me uh, being able to pour into these spots but again the thin bits they're pretty well supported now so uh, happy with that uh, right now on to uh, scraping and sanding this thing right these are finally ready for their first coat of paint uh, screwed down to their boards and filled the screw holes, giving everything a final sand over. I'm sure there'll be some more stuff to do after I've got a coat of paint on it, but uh, I think better to deal with that once there's a bit of, uh, bit of primer on it. Back, the paint's brought a few uh, pimply bits up, and I've got a couple of join lines that obviously didn't have as much glue in as I thought. Also, this, uh, this radius around the bottom hasn't really worked. This last little bit was only 0.2 of a, uh, a mil thick and painting it's made it peel up, so I'll just get rid of the last little bit. The rest of it seems fine. Uh, and I think I can probably just rely on the paint to, to fill that corner and do a bit of sanding. Right, on with the show. And there we go. I let the paint shrink for a couple of days, flatted it back to 320 grit, and I'm pretty pleased with these. And the surface is, finish is nice. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be all right. I uh, did have a problem with this one. Um, putting the big block of wood in there next to all that wet plaster of Paris was a bad plan. It's swollen up and it's pulled it off the base a little bit, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But before I do anything else, I'm gonna do a trial mold up um, and see firstly if I've got any bigger issues to fix. Um, and then if it moulds up okay, I'm going to do a short pour, just to sort of the, the first inch or so, um, just to sort of check my alignment of the two flasks. I've got my, my corners set on them, but uh, yeah, there's no telling whether it's transferred through correctly from my drawings. This has probably gone on long enough for one video, so I think we'll knock it on the head for now. Um, but stick around, click, click like, subscribe, all that stuff, tell your mum. Um, and watch out for the next video where hopefully we'll be pouring some aluminium. Bye for now.